This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. Good evening, everyone. It's time for Ham Talk Live. It's episode number 178. Preview of some new kits with Joe K0NEB, recorded live on Thursday, August 22nd, 2019. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we're joined by Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. And we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. Last week here on the show, Steve Narducci, W9SN, was here to talk about building a modest contest station. And if you missed the show, you can listen anytime at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or YouTube, or you can catch the rebroadcast on WTWW 5085 AM Saturday evenings at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So get those kit-building questions ready to go. If you're listening to us live on Thursday night, you can call us after the interview at 812-NET-HAM-1. It's 812-638-4261. I'll give you the number again a little later in the show when it's time to call. Uh, you can also tweet us. Uh, you can go ahead and tweet us right now if you want to. It's at Ham Talk Live, and uh, we'll be checking that throughout the evening as well. So I'll be back with Joe right after this word from Icom America right here on Ham Talk Live. Heard it, worked it, logged it. It's time to get the transceiver that's best suited for your lifestyle. ICOM offers a variety of high-performance and innovative products. Make the most out of contest season with one of these ICOMs today. The IC7610 is the SDR every ham wants. This high-performance SDR has the ability to pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent ones. The IC7610 by ICOM is a direct sampling, software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. It has RF direct sampling, 110 RMDR, independent dual receiver, and dual digicel. The IC7300 is changing the way entry-level HF is designed. This high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design will far exceed your expectations. With RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. And, of course, the IC7300. 3851 keeps your competitive contesting edge with faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. ICOM's IC7851 is the pinnacle of HF perfection. It has dual receivers, digital IF filters, memory keyer, digital voice recorder, high resolution spectrum waterfall display, enhanced PC connectivity, and an SD memory card slot. For more information on ICOM radios, be sure to visit ICOM America dot com slash amateur five out of four people have trouble with fractions now here's neil rapp with more ham talk live Thanks to ICOM America for bringing Ham Talk Live your way each and every week right here at HamTalkLive.com. And tonight, 
My guest is Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, from Lincoln, Nebraska, and is well known for his kit building expertise. Joe is also well known for his picture shows of Hamvention, and he's the longtime kit building editor at CQ Magazine, and often makes presentations and offers kit builds at Hamfest conventions and club meetings. And Joe started Ham Radio at an early age, has been licensed since 1969, and he's well known for his famous Dr. Seuss hat. So, Joe, it's good to see you at Tuntsville. Welcome back to the show. Well, Neil, it was great to see you uh, at Huntsville, and I now have one of your nice blue shirts and ready to wear at our local meetings in Hamfest. Uh, glad to uh, uh, have that on my back. The hat, I only wear that at Hamvention. So if you come to Xenia, that's when you're going to see it. I have different hats I use for Orlando and Huntsville. Um we had a great crowd at the forum. Uh, they had us in kind of a noisy speaking room, and that will be rectified next year. So uh, uh, it was always good to give a presentation at Huntsville. Um, I went over several new kits that are on the market, and uh, I'd like to talk about one first. And this kit is put out by the four-state QRP group. Now, for those of you who don't know it, it's at 4sqrp.com, and it's a nonprofit group, and they use the money that they get from the kits to finance putting on OzarkCon. OzarkCon is an annual convention in early April that's held at the uh, um, uh, Stone Castle, and the Stone Castle is in Branson, Missouri. And Branson is a great place to take your family, and it's a wonderful weekend to spend with ham radio and do some sightseeing and take in some of Branson's famous shows and shopping. So um, the kits are put together by uh, a nice crew of people that uh, do this for the love of amateur radio and are very talented engineers. Uh, Dave Benson, K1SWL, has his hands in some of these kits. Uh, AA0ZZ has produced a receiver and a, a keyer, actually a few of those. And our, probably our, our, our best contributor to the four state QRP group is David Kripe, NM0S, Nancy Mike Zero Sierra. And David is an engineer at Rockwell Collins, which is Collins Radio. Actually, it's not Rockwell Collins anymore. I think it's United Technologies Collins or something like that. Um, but uh, he designs uh, circuits for a living, and he has come up with some absolutely wonderful designs, and quite often he uses printed circuit board material to make the case. And this is one of the greatest features of some of these kits because instead of having to find a metal box that fits and drill holes and paint it and mark each of the knobs and so forth, these are all pre-printed, pre-drilled, uh, plated, everything. It looks beautiful. It's all printed on the case. And it's made out of circuit board material. If it needs to be shielded, it makes a great double shielded case. If it doesn't need to be like in the Morania kit, uh, it can be etched out so that um, it uh, allows signals to come in. So uh, where, where shall we begin? Shall I start with the new kit? Yeah, let's let's start off with the new kit. I know you've uh, you're pretty excited about it. So let's start off there. Yeah, the, the new kit is different for the four-state QRP group because it's the first kit that's designed for phone. It is a full-carrier AM transceiver for 75 meters. And so it's called the Nouveau 75, and it comes with a speaker built in, uh, plenty of audio output. Uh, it comes with a microphone. Uh, and like I said, the case, like a lot of the kits, uh, is made out of printed circuit board material that comes with the kit. You don't have to do anything but uh, take an emery board and sand the rough edges of the boards as you uh, pop them apart. They just unsnap, and uh, 
you just take an emery board for about two seconds and smooth it out and you put it together and it makes just a neatest looking little radio. Now this radio is not like a lot of the kits where we have a, uh, a VFO or something like that. This is digitally synthesized. And so, uh, what we do is we have a four digit display. Now, of course, because this is AM, we don't care the, the fractions of a kilohertz. So it, it, uh, obviously, uh, runs in one kilohertz steps within the ham band. Outside of the ham band, the VFO moves in five kilohertz steps to match where shortwave broadcast stations are. And the receive coverage goes from 3 megahertz to about 6.5 megahertz. So, of course, uh, you can hear stations like WBCQ, WTWW, WWCR, and so forth that operate in these bands. And uh, the the audio on mine, when I completed it, had a, had a bit of a, a problem with overload from strong signals. And... There was uh, kind of a problem that cropped up in the in the first batch, and that's being corrected. And the correction sounds just wonderful. And then the the next batch of kits that comes out, you won't have to uh, make any modifications at all. But even so, it's very easy to do. And uh, the neat thing about this is if you're not listening to people or trying to talk to them on like 3885 and so forth, uh, which is where the AM crowd hangs out on 75 meters, uh, you can listen to shortwave broadcast and hear the oldies on WTWW or the ham radio related programs such as this one on Saturday night. So the Nouveau 75, of course, runs on 12 volts and has a microphone. It has a jack to uh, plug in a headset if you want that. And, of course, a BNC connector on the back for uh, the RF output. Uh, absolutely great kit. And I, I got to recommend another kit to go with that one, and that is the 4-state tuner. The 4S tuner is an 80 through 10 meter antenna tuner. And it's not just for hams, it's great for shortwave listeners. You can hook up your, your random wire and your ground to this thing, and you can resonate that where you're trying to listen. And so, of course, that cuts out of band interference way down, and it allows you to optimize a random wire antenna for shortwave listening. So the 4S tuner is another one of those that uses the circuit board material for the case. And it's got a red and green LED, so if you're putting out a wad or two on your QRP radio, you can peek it and uh, uh, tune the SWR that way. For listening, of course, you just peek it for the loudest uh, signals. Um, let's see. We also have another kit, and this is a high-pass filter. And what it is designed for is a lot of these direct conversion kits have a problem dealing with the AM broadcast band. Now, I'm fortunate. I only have two, three K, uh, I mean, two, one KW stations three miles away. And I have a five KW about six miles away. And so uh, it, it isn't so much of a problem except if I'm using my longer wire antenna. And this particular kit will knock it down a minimum of 7 dB, uh, 70 dB, and as high as 110 dB or more. And so it will knock down signals in the AM broadcast band, so they are inaudible on these direct uh, conversion receivers. And I hooked it to my 7610, and it took local broadcast signals down from a little over 40 over 9 to under uh, S1 to the point where the meter isn't even moving and the signals are in the noise level. So a uh, very effective filter, and it will let you put 100 watts back through it. So uh, unless you're trying to use 160, in which case you can't use this filter, um, this is a, a really good deal, especially for 80 meters and up, where you might have uh, local broadcast interference uh, interfering with a direct conversion receiver. Yeah, I, we were talking before the show about a bunch of stuff, and and one of those was uh, 
you know, over at the Voice of America Museum over in Westchester, they're, you know, a, a few, you know, stones throws away from WLW and and it comes in on everything and um, we're using tuners basically to, to filter it out. And I think this would be a, a good thing to look into might uh, might just take care of that problem. Yes, it might. And it's a very, very easy kit to put together. Um, I think there's just a couple of capacitors and so forth. It's it's uh, a circuit board case, and it uses the case to make a double shielded case. And uh, it is a very easy kit to put together. I'd say a first time kit builder would definitely not spend an hour with this one. It does have coils in there, but guess what? They're already wound for you as spiral wound on circuit board. So the coils are integral to the kit and you don't have to wind them. Oh, very good. Well, some some cool kits, uh, some new ones, and uh, all kinds of, of cool stuff out there. Um, and, you know, let, let's kind of remind everybody, we, we talk about this when you come on, uh, but let's remind everybody about, you know, sorting parts and, and soldering and, and, you know, some things to, to make sure that you're um, making this as easy as possible when you're putting together some of these new kits. You bet. Uh, I have a lot to cover on that. And I think the first thing would be sorting out your parts. And I found that uh, tackle box trays seem to work the best. And that's because the dividers in the trays can be changed so that you have different size compartments. And I always put the things that I use closest to me uh, and the things I use the least farthest from me. So like resistors and capacitors, they're going to be in those close cups. But the things like screws, nuts, bolts, plugs, jacks, and things like that, those are going to be in the back row. And the middle row, usually your semiconductors and other components like that. So sorting out the parts is really essential, and that's how I do it. And uh, you can also use like a cupcake tray. That works as well. But if you have any animals in the house, and I I had a couple of them giving me the meow. I have two cats here. (laughs) And and they... um, uh, they like to get into things. So those snap closed boxes work great. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, uh, one of them, uh, complaining about, uh, uh, not being paid attention to enough there at the beginning of the show. And as, as mine just, uh, did the same thing here. So I don't know if you could hear it or not, but, but yeah, they do get into that stuff. So, uh, those are always, uh, always good and then uh you know some some uh good soldering equipment is always is always great i know the other day i was working on a uh speaker connector for one of my co-workers and all i had was the the little you know wood burner uh pencil and and i was wishing i had a you know a, a hotter iron because it just was was a pain to try to get it i did finally get it but uh the soldering station makes all the difference in the world yes it does and i really prefer temperature controlled soldering stations not just variable but ones that have some kind of a display so that you know what temperature that tip is and and that makes all the difference in the world Uh, If you're using something less than that, then you're going to get less than ideal results when you're building kits. And it doesn't have to cost a fortune. I know Weller puts out a couple of those that might be $110, $120. But there's a a company actually right here in Lincoln called Xtronic USA, X-T-R-O-N-I-C-U-S-A dot com. And they put out one called the 3020. And it sells uh, roughly around $60, and I think that's even with free shipping on Amazon. And this particular one will hold the temperature within 2 degrees Celsius. It has a solder roll holder to keep your soldering, uh, your, your roll of solder in place. And it has two different tip cleaners on it. And if you don't use it for a while, it has a sleep mode. And... 
uh, it'll go hot enough to do the lead-free solder. And I could go on and on about it, but it it is a wonderful little soldering station and very inexpensive. Uh, okay. And like and I, I said, I, it's... Oh, go ahead. It's thermos, thermostatically controlled, so as opposed to one you have to turn up and down all the time. And, you know, you mentioned uh, solder, so let, let's talk solder here for a second. All right. Well, the solder I prefer to use when I'm building kits is 6337, and that is uh, called eutectic solder. And it's a little different than 6040 in that the melting point is a couple of degrees lower, but it has a an almost uh, non-existent plastic state. And what that is, the plastic state is as it's cooling, if something moves, it might crystallize and you get a cold solder joint. While this type of solder uh, has a very short plastic state, so it's much more rare that that would happen. I use rosin core no clean, so it looks nicer when I'm done. And I don't use anything thicker than dot zero three one inches. Uh, dot zero two five is thinner, but also works good. But dot zero uh, two five or dot three one rosin core, no clean, sixty three thirty seven. Yes, I have some sixty forty solder, but I use that mostly for soldering heavy antenna wires and coax connectors and things like that. Very good. Well, all great points, and we want to remind everybody of those. So, uh, if you did, haven't tuned in to Joe uh, before here on the show, uh, you you get that. And if you want to hear more about that, uh, why well, look up some of those old episodes, and we talk uh, quite a bit about that. So that's uh, all great stuff. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more kits, and we'll take your phone calls and tweets and messages uh, for Joe, K0NEB, uh, when we come back after this word from Tower Electronics right here on Ham Talk Live. Hey, honey, have you seen the PL259s anywhere? No, I haven't. Come on, kids, let's go. There's just one place to go for all of your connector needs. Tower, Tower Electronics. Electronics. Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics. A, a giant, giant warehouse, warehouse of connectors, connectors and adapters and for every, every occasion. occasion. Thousands to choose from in every shape, size, and color. And they have antennas, soldering supplies, cables, meters, and more. Or where do you go if you want to buy a connector at a fraction of retail cost? Tower, Tower Electronics. Electronics. Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics. And this weekend only, take advantage of our special liquid sale. Buy nine solder type PL259s, get the tenth one for just one penny. One penny, penny. They make great Christmas presents. And what better way to say I love you than with the gift of a PL259? Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics. Electronics. Hi, I'm Scott Cole, KB9 AMM, president of Tower Electronics. I like the company so much that I bought it. Tower Electronics, coming to a ham fest near you or online at pl-259.com. And we're in the yellow pages under Amateur Radio Connectors. My, wherever did you get that lovely PL-259? Tower Electronics, pl-259.com or call. Call 920-435-2973. Do we sell PL259 connectors? Join the conversation. Give us a call at 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Now, here's more Ham Talk Live. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Wow, that's a really big boat anchor you have there. Thanks to Tower Electronics for being a sponsor of the show. It's good to see Scott and Jill down at Huntsville as well, and they'll be in Shelby, North Carolina, coming up on August 30th, 31st, and September 1st, and then they'll be in Findlay, Ohio, September 8th, 
And in Peoria at the Superfest on September 14th and 15th. That's Peoria, Illinois. But you can find them anytime at pl 259.com. Ham Talk Live's on the air every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at HamTalkLive.com. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we've got more to talk about, and we'll we'll talk about some some another kid and and some other stuff going on with Joe. But we want to invite you to call in. So it is time now for your calls. If you have a question for Joe, give us a call at eight one two net ham one or you can tweet us at ham talk live with your question or if you're on uh, spreaker you can type into the chat thing and it'll pop up here too uh, but the phone number again 812 net ham one eight one two six three eight four two six one now if you're listening to us on wtww or on the podcast edition you're not going to reach anybody at the phone number because uh it's thursday night so uh, you won't find anywhere you won't find us anywhere on the telephone just just uh virtually so uh joe while we're waiting on the calls and and uh i'll check the tweets here and everything you've got one more kit uh to talk about that's uh, a relatively new one yeah this one doesn't come from the four state qrp group it comes from qrpkits.com and what this kit is is it's called the wall wart tamer and what it does is it takes wall wart type power supplies, filters them, cleans it up, and regulates the output and makes it so you can adjust the voltage output. Now, of course, this thing seems to work most ideally with old laptop power supplies. Being in the IT business, we end up with a lot of old laptops that come back to get recycled. Well, I don't throw away those darn power supplies. And they, they work wonderful for this. Yes, it puts out 19 volts, which is wonderful, because there's a, a drop of a volt and a half or so in this circuit. And what it does, it has a full wave bridge on the input. And so you could even take like an 18-volt AC transformer and hook it to the input. Uh, if you're hooking a DC output, like from a laptop supply, you don't care what the polarity is because it goes into a full wave bridge. And then it goes through a lot of filtering and regulation. And then you have uh, an adjustment. You can set the output voltage. And it gives you a, an amp or two of filtered DC uh, from about, uh, if you're using a 19-volt uh, power supply, from about 17 volts down to about 1.5 volts. Now, adjusting that little pot on the board is a little tricky, but you can take that off and replace it with a panel mount pot and you can use one of those little voltmeters and you can uh, have full-time monitoring of what it's putting out. You can make a really nice little power supply out of this. And uh, I kind of like to use that now for a first-time build for somebody because the spacing and the type of components used are very, very easy to work with in terms of soldering. And they get something that they can use with almost every other kit they make from then on. It's a variable voltage power supply. So uh, it's called the Wall Wart Tamer, and it's available from qrpkits.com. So, uh, in fact, that's probably going to be the kit we're going to be doing in Peoria. So if you're going to be there, we will hope you come by and say hi. All right, very good. And the phone number here to call is 812-638-4261, 812-638-4261. And, and I was looking at my cell phone and noticed that it that it buzzed just for a second. So I know that Jocelyn was trying to call in. So <laughs> we'll give that number again, 812-638-4261. And we'll uh, see if we can get some calls in here this evening. Um now, you've been uh, with CQ uh, doing the article for quite a while, and, and you've got a, an anniversary coming up here. Yep. The November issue will celebrate 10 years of writing for CQ magazine. And it happened right in Don AE5DW's car where I was uh, given the opportunity by Rich uh, W2VU, who is the editor of CQ. 
And when he kind of dropped the bomb on me of saying, how would you like to write for CQ? Uh, the, I was kind of flabbergasted. And Don, who was driving the car, said, Joe, go for it. Go for it. And I said, oh, yeah, you <laughs> bet. And I sent a couple samples in. And he said, OK, that's November and December. Let's keep going. And we've been going ever since. Now, we, we both thought that this will last maybe about six months, maybe at the most. And as you can see, it's gotten more popular and it keeps going. And so as, as long as they'll have me, I'm going to keep writing and keep building kits. And uh, the great thing about this is it gives hams a chance to see some of these kits in the process of being built so they get to see them partially assembled and actually not assembled at all. I lay out the parts in almost all my columns so you can see them totally unbuilt and I show some detail if there are certain things like the corners of a circuit board that need to be soldered together and things like that and I try to take as good a pictures as possible and get those in there so that everybody can see what is inside that kit so, yes, this is the uh, 10th anniversary. I'm actually working on my November column as we speak. And uh, 10 years of writing, I, I never, never would have dreamed. And it's really led to some great things. Uh, I am now also the, the chapter author uh, right now who does the updates of the construction techniques chapter in the ARO handbook. And I've done that since 2014. I never thought that I'd be a, a handbook author, and so uh, I'm kind of humbled by that, but everybody tells me, actually, they're doing a brain dump on you. They want all that information <laughs> in your head in these books and magazines. Yep, they do. They do, and it's uh, it's good that you can share that uh, eloquently as you do. Well, we do have a question here from Chris, AA4CB. Uh, Chris says, I'm looking to pick up the uh, Microbitics HF SSB CW transceiver kit. Uh, he hears many good things about them. Have you ever put one together? And if so, how difficult was it? Uh, I put one together, and the good thing is you don't have to solder all those little parts on that board. The board is pre-assembled and pre-tuned, but you have a lot of front panel wiring to do. And... I was fortunate enough to have a uh, friend in our local radio club here who had a 3D printer, and he was able to 3D print a snap-together three-piece case for that. And so I was able to bolt the uh, front panel components to the front and back panel and then uh, solder the uh, cables together to the ones that plug onto the board and snap it together, and there was my uh, assembled radio. It works pretty good. Um, obviously, it's not going to receive AM unless you listen to the upper or lower sideband, but it's an excellent little QRP radio and uh, is surprising how well it works, and it's also very surprising how many mods there are, including AGC and other functions for it. Um, there are a zillion mods for it, and that's that's the fun part of it, because the main board is already done for you. Um, but, like I said, you're going to be wiring all the front panel knobs and, and so forth, and the uh, display, and and putting all that together. And that's what still makes it a kit. Somebody told me, well, that's not really a kit. Well, it certainly is because there's a lot of wiring that you get to do. It's just you don't have to mess with the stuff on the board. Okay. So there you have it, Chris. I've heard a lot of good things about those too. So uh, good luck with that project and, uh, and hope it goes well for you. 812-638-4261 is the telephone number if you'd like to call in, 812-NET-HAM1, or you can tweet us at Ham Talk Live. And if you're on Spreaker, you can leave us a comment there, and it'll come into the chat uh, window. So we'll take a look at that and answer some more questions. And, um, you know, we, we'll, we'll go back to Huntsville, I guess, uh, you know, um, we were talking about uh, about uh, kind of getting together with with people in Huntsville, and and this is uh, an anniversary for that for you too. 
Yeah, this was my 20th time uh, coming there. Now, I've missed a couple of years, uh, one early around 2002, I think, and then I missed it two years ago because of the full solar eclipse, uh, the total eclipse that was right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I, I, I missed it twice, but uh, I've been there 20 times, and I, I have to take my hats off to Mark and the whole crew of volunteers that put together that wonderful ham fest, and I'm really, really looking forward to being there again next year. All right, very good. Well, I am getting a call here, but Skype is not letting me add it, and I don't want to hang up on you. So, <laughs> hello, you have reached Jeff Grant from Vertical Solutions. Please leave a oh, message. Thank you. Oh, so, so I'm go- so I'm going to try to call At him. Tell him, please record your message when you <laughs> finish recording. We, uh, hang up or press one for uh, more options. Yeah, Ooh. we're we're we got all kinds of stuff going on here. So let me let me. Okay, we got it. Now let me try this again. Thank you, Skype. And we'll try to call him if this will work. We're trying. There we go. Did we get you, Jocelyn? Yeah, yes, you did. All right, we've got it. We've got everybody on the phone at the same time now. So that's what we were after. Good evening. This is Jocelyn KD8 VRX. You have a question here for Joe. Uh, question and comment. So first, uh, say hi to Joe, and uh, thank you for being on the show. Um, I was looking at that four-state QRP you mentioned, the Nuvo 75. It does say that the sales are uh, pending right now. They are suspended, not pending. I'm sorry. Uh, they say the sales are suspended, so hopefully uh, it's probably just a little minor shortage, and they'll be out because that looks like an awesome radio. And, Neil, you're right. I was trying to call you earlier and that uh, the issue was that I was going to ask Joe what he uses for soldering and if he had any advice, but he already had given that out. So there goes Ah. that, and I know (laughs) Joe's a kit guy. So while I was at Huntsville in the flea market, I ran across uh, one of the flea uh, tables, a flea market table, sorry. There was a uh, Rocket City 3D, and uh, they 3D printed a lot of cases and stuff, but they had a uh, 9-to-1 on un for an un and fed with the case to wire it as a kit for $20. So I got one of those. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, put that to use before the cold weather uh, kicks in. So that's, I just had a few comments for Joe there. Well, thank you very much, Jocelyn. And uh, it was great to see you again. And uh, uh, look forward to working you on the air again, especially from the uh, VOA station. And uh, uh, yeah, they were there. Uh, There was... uh, uh, Nightfire Electronics, which is vakits.com, and they had a whole bunch of little simple kits that very few were over about 12 bucks, and uh, they're a great source of beginner's kits as well. Yes, I, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with uh, Nightfire. I've, uh, I think Angel is the, uh, the lead uh, person there, uh, the owner, and I've talked to him several times. Actually, I was looking for a uh, a bag of uh, random parts uh, that, of course, he didn't have with them, but uh, was lucky enough to uh, send me an email, and uh, I'll be ordering that soon. So, Joe, thank you again for being on the air. Nicholas, uh, sorry, <laughs> Neil. <laughs> and, uh, Neil, thank you. Thank you for picking up the call. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, putting some kids to bed. I'll let you guess what the name is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm right. going to guess it's Nicholas. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, thank you guys and enjoy the show and talk to you soon again. You bet. All right, Jocelyn, All right, thanks good. for calling in. Bye. Appreciate it. All right, and we had another call here, so let me uh let me see if we can get Mark on the phone here. Maybe uh that'll work. Okay. I saw him call. Hello, Mark. And for BCD Yes, well, hi, Mark, Mark. F- from uh, from the Huntsville Ham Fest. Good evening. You have uh, something for us tonight? Just uh, I wanted to say hello because uh, things happened so fast this weekend. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to either of you, 
and uh, I, I did see Jocelyn, uh, uh, so I think it was sometime Saturday, uh, Sunday morning uh, before he left, but uh, I don't know when you guys uh, uh, left the ham fest, but we had a, we had a great Sunday too. It was just a, a fabulous weekend all around. And, uh, you know, Neil, you, uh, you brought the pig costume and we got somebody in that. It was uh, just a, a really memorable weekend. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time. Really? Yeah, good. we had, we had uh, two really different people it. in the suit. Yeah, we had two different people oh, in the different. suit. Yeah, we had, we had Karen in there and then we had, um, oh, I forget the young lady's name, but she was, she was so excited about, uh, about being in the suit and now i've forgotten her name oh, oh that's, my goodness that's, that's terrible but yeah they they had a had a great time with that and yeah i i i have to admit i i, I dr rob suggs gave me a call and said you you got to come see the you got to come see the observatory and the ham shack out at marshall so that was my sunday was was i i slipped out to nasa for a few minutes so um, okay, so you went up to the observatory on Montecito yeah. and then out to the Marshall cl- uh, Club. Yes, and, uh, that that's one thing on my bucket list. I've been so busy; I have not been out to the uh, uh, the uh, the Marshall Club, but it's just a few blocks away from my wife's office, and, and I owe a visit out there. Yeah, Rob. Uh, so Rob was what? on me last year to go and and couldn't get it worked in. So this year we had to work it in. It, it was fascinating. Very very good. I'll tell you what, guys, we put in quite a weekend down there, and uh, I got home yes, Sunday from an overgrown yard and been focused <laughs> on, the, on the getting caught up here at the home front, but uh, just an emotionally exhausting week, and uh, I'm still in a recovery mode, and uh, probably next week sometime we'll get back together and talk about what went right, what could go better, and uh, start looking at next year. Well, well, Mark, uh, I, I, I really appreciate your efforts and uh, look forward to it again. And uh, maybe a quieter room to speak, of course. But uh, uh, other than that, I uh, really, really, really enjoyed it. And and like everybody said, there was a lot more people there this year. Absolutely. Um, I, I announced on uh, Ham Nation last night, uh, Neil, I'm not sure if you heard, uh, but we reported just over 5,000 visitors at a 20% increase from the year before. Wow. Excellent. Well, uh, several people had, uh, were commenting, wow, it's just really busy. There's, there's, there's a lot of people coming through here. So that, that totally makes <laughs> sense. So congratulations. It was, yeah, it was a, it was a really good weekend. And Joe, uh, to your comment about the, uh, the forum room. Yeah. I've already passed that along to Tom and, uh, we, uh, we got to work on that for next year. Sounds great. I really look forward to it. Okay, guys, like I said, I just wanted to call in and say hi, and uh, I really, uh, really appreciate both of your uh, uh, attending, and Jocelyn, too. He's probably listening, and probably several others that uh, that were there, and uh, we'll, we'll try to do it bigger and better and, and friendlier next year. Always the world's friendliest ham fest. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, guys. 70, Absolutely. 73. All right, 73, Mark. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. Well, uh, we've got some activity uh, here in the uh, in the chat. Chris uh, says another excellent Huntsville Ham Fest, and thanks to Mark and Jill. Uh, KD8. Oh, I always Q, 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 QDA. I always mess up her call. She won something. She won a radio, and uh, she says it was it was it was very busy. So, but a great job. So that's uh that's a good deal well joe we're just about out of time here tonight so we and we got some some calls which i always like so uh anything else we need to uh throw in before we go yeah yeah um i'd say every kit builder should have a digital multimeter and there's no excuse not to have one uh if you've got a harbor freight nearby and they have the coupons quite often for three dollars or even free sometimes. Uh, and those meters, you know, they're not the they're not a fluke, but actually they do pretty good, and they're more than good enough for uh, beginning kit builder. And so don't don't discount those Harbor Freight meters as being not worthy of it, because they they actually work well for kit builders. All right, very good. Oh yeah, and Jill says the TM 
281A, I believe it is. She said 2801. I think it's 281. If I, maybe it's a typo. Not sure. Anyway, um, she uh, was a lucky winner on that. So congratulations, Jill. And uh, good to see you down there, too. Well, Joe, I guess we're going to wrap things up here tonight, but thanks for coming on again, and we'll be talking again on here in a in a few months. And, uh, oh, what what do we have to look forward to here on uh, in uh, CQ here in the next uh, month? Well, um, I think September issue has that high-pass filter that I talked about. We'll go ahead and finish up tonight and... Uh, been playing around too here um we got the chat apparently uh fixed and, and we've got uh skype fixed apparently and, and we've got a new audio interface too so we're working out the the bugs here with the new computer and and everything and so we're kind of upgrading everything and and i think uh, it's going to work out really well we're getting the last of the bugs fixed so uh we should be able to to take calls and get everything going again uh reliably soon and it's all working now and just a matter of uh of getting all the little bugs worked out so um that should be improving as the shows go on so uh joe we'll all finish up here but thanks so much for coming on all right well thank you very much for having me on always glad to talk about kit building all right. Well, that's Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB from CQ Magazine. He is the kit building editor, and we're going to call that a wrap for this week's edition of Ham Talk Live. Thanks to Joe for being there. Thanks for everybody uh, listening and calling in and typing in and invite you back next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time when Dr. Ralph Fedor, K0IR, and Dr. Glenn Johnson, W0GJ, will be here to talk about the Pitcairn Island de-expedition. And for a list of all of our upcoming guests, visit HamTalkLive.com. And if you like Ham Talk Live, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen. It helps others find us faster. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours. Don't, 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 don't,